Hello, everybody. Looks like everybody's already been in here doing some chatting and some other stuff. Welcome to this live update and question and answer period here on the Insect Hunter YouTube channel. Excited to get to chat with you guys and uh, yeah, excited to be here. I'm sure you guys are wondering why I'm doing this, where I just posted a video last week. A big part of why I'm doing this is to promote um, the survey that's going on right now. I know you're probably sick of hearing it. Most of you that are already on here have already taken it. But if you haven't taken that survey to try and win a free t-shirt, it really does help me in my work. Because, I mean, that that's what I need to do is I need to show that I'm really making a difference in people's lives. Oh, we lost a person because I talked about the surveys and the t-shirts. Sorry, bud. <laughs> so wanted to give you guys an update on the channel, let you guys know that I will continue to post content on the channel, but I'm going to adjust my schedule somewhat. Um, can everybody hear me good? Let me just make sure. I haven't heard anything in the in the chat or anything yet. Let me just make sure. There we go. There's the live chat. Make sure you guys can actually hear me. Okay, great. Awesome. Thanks, Nathan and Eric. All right, so anyways, I'm gonna tweak my posting schedule. My goal now at this point is to post once per month. That's kind of a more sustainable goal for me right now because my work is kind of changing. Right now at work, I am still working a lot with insects and I help people identify them and I go out to people's houses to help out with uh, insects. But I, I need to be able to have some time to do those things and I'm also starting to work more with birds. I work with barn owls um, so they're a pretty cool species and I've been studying them and also working with, um, some rodents and stuff. So I have to give a disclaimer that we're potty training my son right now and babies might start screaming. So this, yeah. <laughs> so this might be somewhat interrupted and a little bit crazy, but thank you guys for your patience and dealing with it. It's what happens when you have a family, but my family's awesome and that's the most important thing to me. So. Yeah, what we do with barn owls is, um, I'll tell you about that in a little bit, Wally. If you'll ask him the questions, I'll talk to you about kind of what we do with research with them and what we're doing. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll start going through the questions that were left in the community tab. Um, as you probably saw, I posted a picture that said, hey, we're going to be doing a live stream, all that stuff. Um, that was in the communities tab. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and this little guy's not gonna Don't leave me alone. Give me. <laughs> um, so in there, I posted, and I'm gonna take those questions first. So I might butcher some of these names, but we'll start with those questions, and then we will go into the questions that you guys ask down here. Uh, make sure and type question before your question. That way, I can sift through all the comments and stuff to try and get to the actual questions. All right. So first question. This came from our community tab. This one, okay, this name I'm going to struggle with. I'm sorry, you're probably watching this, or you will watch this. Uh, the name is Mantivitis Buchis. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but anyways. Mantivitis Buchis, it almost, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to comment, because I don't want to make you feel bad. <laughs> it's probably from a different country, so I'm sorry. I butchered it. So um, his question was, can you find some insects during the winter? And he also said he's a big fan of the channel because there's not a lot of channels that upload stuff about entomology. So can you find insects during the winter? It depends on the climate you're in. If you're in a place where it gets really cold and it's uh, a cold winter, it's not very warm, you're probably not going to find many insects. Almost all the insects are either pupating or as adults hibernating or hibernating in some fashion. So they're all hidden deep in the ground or deep in a, in a log or something. Hey, buddy. You want to go help mommy? Mm -hmm. Go find mommy. See what she's doing. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, doing that, that's kind of how you will find them. So, um, But if you had to find insects in the winter and you're trying to find them in your house or something, or you had to do it for a collection, good luck because, I mean, it's just so hard. And when they're hibernating, you could find them, but when they're not moving, it's so hard to be able to actually collect them. There is one rare type of insect that's just super awesome to me um, that I'd love to go and try and collect sometime. Let me see if I can pull up a picture here for you. I believe they're called, um, let's see what they're called. 
I want to show you guys a picture. They're really cool. They actually live on top of the snow. The, the family name is called Grillo Blattidae. Here's a picture. I mean, this is not the best picture, but um, anyways. It almost looks like a... Um, let me find where she get that to just zoom in full screen. They look kind of almost to me like an earwig, but they're somewhere between a cockroach and a grasshopper, and they actually live on ice, and they will live in really cold environments. They'll, like, run across the ice, and I believe they're called ice crawlers, and they're really cool. So they're found only in uh, a few areas of the world. Those are some you could find in the winter, but, I mean, they're just so rare, and um, they're very rare. I've only ever seen an actual specimen in a collection once, and that was in a huge collection at Texas A&M. So finding them in the winter is just not very likely. All right, let's move on to the next question here. All right, uh, this one comes from Ramo28, or Ramo28. And uh, he says, are there some insects we shouldn't catch? In my opinion, yes, there are some times we shouldn't catch them. But um, I think actually catching them, as long as you're handling them safely and properly, I think it's okay to catch them as long as you're releasing them, some of these insects. The type of insects you want to look out for are those that are endangered. Um, the way to... Um, know if an insect is endangered, at least in the United States, there's a great website. It is, you just go into Google and what you'll search, what you'll search for is you just type in Endangered Insects USA. And then it will take you to a website, um, I believe it's fws.gov, and then it'll show like endangered species. This is kind of what the link will look like when you search it on Google. Right in there. Is this thing like putting it in reverse? I don't even know this thing mirrors. Maybe it's just mirroring for me for some reason. Anyways, but if you click on this link here, it'll take you and it'll talk to you about all the different endangered insects. One of the main ones to point out is, uh, let me find the picture here. One of the main ones to point out is the American burying beetle. That's uh, an endangered species that there's been a lot of work done with. Uh, most of the endangered species I see on here are beetles and flies and... Um, butterflies, different things like that. There's my son getting excited because he found a bug. <laughs> it drives my wife crazy because my son just loves bugs. So here's a picture of the American burying beetle. There you go. Anyways, yeah, they're a pretty cool beetle and they're endangered. All right, so next question. I will get to the questions that are in the comments. Make sure and just type question at the first. I know it's a question to answer, not just um, a string of comments. Um, the next question comes from Christopher Anthony. He says, any advice on finding bugs? Daddy, got? You got a bug? Ooh. Okay, you, you're going to have to show me in a little bit, okay? Oh, come here, sweetie. Hey, hey, hey Joseph. Hey, no! Yeah, I can't. If I try and control him, it just All right. Screams. So, um, any advice no, on no, finding no, bugs no, and no, maybe no, bug no, vendors? No, Apparently, all the sellers have, like, a bug guy, LMAO. By the way, I really love your channel. It's very informative and honestly wholesome knowing you are a papa. Thank you. Yes, it is awesome being a father, but it is also very stressful and tiring. So, any advice on finding bugs and maybe bug vendors? I don't have a lot of advice on finding bugs. I have just tried to research to, sorry, reach out to universities. There's a lot of zoos. Uh, I like to go through those channels first just because I know that they're going to actually be legal and legitimate because there's a lot of websites online and they'll ship you bugs and they'll send them to you but whether it's actually legal for you to receive those bugs is another question. Like a zoo or a university worker is going to have a better idea of whether what they're doing is actually legal and legitimate. Um, I would worry and really try to investigate if you're trying to order an, a live insect as a pet. Um, you really need to look into that. Um, if you were trying to talk about like people that just sell you bugs that are already pinned and specimens, then um, BioQuip sells some. I mean, with those, it's not a big deal because there's not a ton of regulations on um, pinned or preserved specimens. It's just live insects. There's a lot of laws and um, rules and things that you have to deal with. Um, but <clears throat> um, I did want to share a little bit of advice on that is that if you're in the United States, you need to get a special permit if you're trying to bring in an insect from another country. That can even be stick insects, like the ones that I've had on my videos. Um, yeah, um, Brian just said that it's illegal to ship them across state lines, a lot of these species. 
um, especially if they're pests or they're feeding on plants. So there's so many laws about trying to keep bugs from spreading and stuff. But anyways, I have stick insects in my office and I had to go through this permit process and it took me about eight months. It's not like I was working that whole time, but it took eight months to get, get all these permits set up to have these stick insects in my office. And I had to have someone come in and inspect and check it out. So it's a big process if you're going to be having some of these rare and different species. Um, it's not like these government programs are going to come and try and hunt you down and shut you down unless you actually have something that's really harmful. But at the same time, if they wanted to, you could get some big fees and fines and stuff. So if you are going to be trying to have different insect pets, I would investigate the species and then also look at getting, uh, I believe it's USDA APHIS. I believe the permit is called a PPQ, um, Plant Protection Quarantine. And they just want to make sure you actually have a facility and containers and things that will not allow these things to escape and get out in the wild. Um, if you catch insects within your state, even if they are a pest or something that's not a good thing, as long as you keep it within the state, you should be fine actually having it and keeping it in a, in a container. You can raise whatever, you know, like a, I could raise Mormon crickets or some aphids that are pests, things like that I can raise, but it's when you start shipping things and sending them to other places or you get something from somewhere else, that's where you need extra permits and permission and, and some extra help. So anyways, I think that's all I've got there on that community tab. So I'll start going through the comments, see if I can make all of these show up here. All right, I'm going to scroll through. I'll go back to the first here. All right, don't ask, says, oh, great, I thought this channel died. Wait, no. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of videos on here that are available. I haven't been, I don't post like other YouTubers, you know, like twice a week or anything like that because I have a full-time job and this is part of my job and I, you know, I've got my family, I've got other things. I've got all sorts of other hobbies and stuff too that I've got to try and um, keep alive. So, I mean, this is just part of what I do as part of my job as an educator at the University of Idaho Extension. So, anyways, let's see here. Let's get down to the next question. Um, Yob Das, what is your opinion about buying insects online? Like I just said, I don't, I, I think it's fine if you really do your research, but at the same time, I question the legitimacy of some of these websites that are shipping insects from around the world and whether they're actually legal and whether the some of these insects are threatened or not. I mean, that's why I would go with a zoo or someone that's really working at a university or researching someone that understands the insects and really research what the status of those insects is in the wild because that's, um, that's important in my opinion. And, and I don't know that a lot of these online websites are focused on that. They're more focused on, hey, let's make some money, we'll sell it to you. And there's a whole bunch of fine print that doesn't make much of any sense. All right, the next question says, how are the twins doing? Well, I think I'll show you guys because my son here is just being so crazy, so I might as well just show them too. Give them a second. We'll see how well this works. Oh, you're going to see the house. It's so perfect and so amazing. Here we go. Here's one of the babies. Are you doing good? Are you doing good? Yeah. Are you doing good? I'm so happy. <laughs> He's doing good. They're finally starting to smile and stuff. And here's the other one. He's just sleepy and resting and relaxing relaxing and so peaceful. This guy's excited to be alive though. Can you say hi? Well, I'm over the base shark. <laughs> <laughs> yep, baby shark. If you have any kids, you know what that is and you never stop hearing it, so. Anyways, all right, let's move on to some other questions here. Get that lighting back. All right, let's see where we were at. Which insect have you struggled with captive care the most? Oh, I, you know, captive caring, I don't do a ton of it. I try to focus on local species and things that are easy to keep alive. I can say that the easiest are always cockroaches because you can forget about them for two weeks, forget to water them or forget to feed them, and usually they'll survive. I mean, I like them because they can survive so much better and it's easier. Uh, but I'd probably say um, scarab beetles, scarab beetle larvae. Um, they're just, I mean, it's just a lot. It's a lot of work, and 
trying to maintain moisture and things like that. That's a struggle. As for like these stick insects that are like a tropical species and that are from around the world, I mean, they've been pretty easy to take care of relatively, but anything that's really dependent on moisture and stuff, I mean, maybe I'm just not that that good with um, wearing things. I don't know. Uh, I, I still do a lot of it, but most of the captive care I do is just to raise them to take around to schools and teach kids and uh, take to events and stuff to get um, entomology out there and promote it. All right. This is time to put in a plug for my survey. If you haven't taken it yet, please take the survey that I've got going right now. Um, you can find the survey at bit.ly slash insect hunter shirt, and you'll get a chance to win an insect hunter t-shirt for helping us with the survey, and it helps us keep our channel going because that's part of what my job is to prove that I can change people's lives and educate them about insects and help people. So I believe that we're doing that, but you guys are the ones that will say they'll believe you more than me because I'm obviously wanting to keep doing this and I always will. So, <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Clognog asks, what do you like better, wood ticks or mosquitoes? I don't know that I like either mosquitoes. of those better. Mosquitoes? <laughs> I, I don't know that I like either of those any one more than the other. Um, if I say mosquitoes, Brian, my friend mosquitoes. who's on here, will get upset because he studies ticks. So I don't really, I don't think I like mosquitoes. either of those very much. Um, mosquitoes. Yes. Go see if mommy's got some mosquitoes, okay? Go see if there's a mosquito in mommy. Um, Probably wood ticks. I don't know as much about them. They sound interesting. So there you go. I'm sure uh, Brian will be happy with that. What kind of camera can I use to photograph them? Um, are you just talking about... What are you talking about? Like just insects in general? Um, in a video, you said iPhone would work, but I have a crappy track phone. I also have a tight budget. Um, you could just purchase a, a not super expensive digital camera, probably for like $100. But it's going to be at least $100 if you want something um, higher quality. You can also get, um, if you just want to take pictures, I would look at getting an endoscope. There's one that I use right now. It's called a Depths Tech um, endoscope. That's a good way to take um, some pictures. It can get you some close-up. Um, maybe, are, are you still here, Brian? If you're here, maybe you can comment what kind of camera you use. There's some cameras that are, you know, like, very good for magnification and it seemed like they're pretty affordable and you can use them to zoom in on insects close up and uh i don't think they were too expensive they they should be you know 50 bucks or something but if you're here, still here brian let me know or just if you're not here let us know in the comments so um hopefully that will help but there's some small cameras i think brian would have the best answer on that for you because excuse me i i just have all this funding that the university helps out with. I mean, it's not like I have unlimited funding, but they do help out with a lot of stuff. If you're just joining us and you have questions, um, put them in the comments and put question before it, and then I'll try to um, go through and read the questions. All right. Dragon Slayer popped in to say hi. Hi, how's it going? Um, what is the rarest insect you have? As in like a living insect or like a, one in a collection? I don't know. Um, Rarest insect. I'm trying to think what I'm most proud of out of those insects. I really like my big toe biter. That one is not the most common around here. Those those big toe biter species are not very common, and that's always a pleaser with people. So I'd say that that's probably one of my my favorites. But I mean, I, I I'm leaning. I know this isn't an insect, but my wolf spider that I took all that time to pin and mount and do up really nice. That's probably my favorite specimen if I get to choose out of spiders too, because that thing was just so awesome, so big and so rare. I've only seen one of those in my whole life, and you know that was just awesome. And you know I show that off to everybody, and people all the time come to my desk and they get scared thinking there's a live spider on my desk, which is a huge compliment because, um, I mean, if they think it's alive, then I must have done a pretty good job pinning it and getting it set up. So, all right, Wally Kern, how many enclosures are you currently maintaining? How many isopods? I'm not doing anything uh, at this point, I think, with isopods. And uh, 
I'm trying to remember. Is isopods is that um, like the roly polies and stuff? Just trying to remember exactly what the isopods are. A lot of the scientific terms I forget. I I prefer common names, but anyways. Yeah, it looks like roly polies and stuff like that. That's what we call them here, pill bugs, um, as well. I don't have any of those. I mostly just have insects at this point. I do have, so right now I've got two tarantulas. They're juvenile um, curly toe. I think they're like a Nicaraguan curly, the curly toe or curly hair? They're a curly hair tarantula. I've got two juveniles. I've got like five mealworm containers, which I raise to, I'm using them to feed the tarantulas. And then I also, that sun is getting a little too bright. We better change our angle here. Um, I also raise those to take around to the schools to the kids to teach them about um, metamorphosis. So I've got four mealworm containers. I've got two um, stick insect containers. And I've also got, um, what else do I have? I think that's it right now. That's about all I've got. All right, let's go up a little bit here. I don't have a ton of insects right now. I'm trying to get some um, Jerusalem crickets and some Mormon crickets and some other things. I'd really like to uh, raise some of those too. All right, let's see where I'm at here in the question. What was the worst bug bite you ever had? I definitely still would say the toe biter. That's been the worst one so far. I mean, it's not like it hurt for a long time, but just that in that instant when it bit, it just, I was so painful. I, I don't know. I, that to me seems like the most painful bite so far. All right, what's my favorite bug? I love scarab beetles. They're pretty awesome. They're, they're pretty awesome, yeah, I really like those. How many insects do you have preserved? I probably have a couple hundred. I honestly prefer catch and release. I love seeing them alive and just looking at their behavior and learning about them. I think that's more exciting to me. Okay, buddy, go help mommy. Yes, you need to go help mommy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, it keeps, I keep more comments come showing up and then I have to jump back <laughs> up. Okay, buddy, I need you to go help mommy. No! Honey, will you help with him, please? Here. Go to mommy. No! You better go or you're going to be in trouble. You don't tell daddy no. Come here. All right. Yeah, I do have a lot of preserved insects, though. I just prefer actual live ones and catching them. That's, to me, what I love the most is just the hunt and the, the mission or just the goal this you know, the fun of the chase of actually finding them and hunting them down is awesome. And then the surprise of what you find. That's what I love the most. Um, let's see here. Great smile. I don't know if that was for me or for my son. Probably my son. <laughs> what is your... Okay, let's see here. We already did talk about um, buying insects online. Do you live in Idaho? Yes, I do. That's where I work. I work for the University of Idaho. Let's see here. I read about making an insect hotel out of pallets and natural materials from the meadows and woods. What do you think about that? That actually sounds like a lot of fun. Something like I'd like to try. That sounds like an interesting idea, Grace. Um, put in the comments a link or something. I'd like to look that up. That sounds really interesting. I don't know what to think about that. Insect hotel. Looks like Brian's maybe tried one out. Okay. What was the first insect you found? Well, when I was three years old, I discovered that ants exist. I don't know. <laughs> Probably ants is, are the first insects I really was interested in. I always would go outside and, you know, crush up Cheerios and cereal and stuff for the ants and just sit there and watch them. I always loved watching ants. I thought they were so interesting. What's the most interesting insect that you know lives in Boise, Idaho foothills? I don't know. That's a good question. I haven't really done too much collection collecting up in that area um but i could definitely ask a friend and see i'd like to try and go take a look or something Let's see if brian's got some ideas looks like he's kind of giving some ideas about cameras hopefully you know what i was talking about brian you had like this little camera that you plugged into your tablet when we were looking at the um you remember it's like this small camera it's like a camera with a big flashlight on it and we were looking at mites in the best beetles um that's what i was talking about i don't know if that was affordable or not but let's see here 
have you the question if you have ever used a butterfly trap what bait have you used and also do you need to put it up high in trees i've never used a butterfly trap um to this point i would assume you'd have to have special pheromones or something or i'm not sure i've never used that i'd have to look that up question are you planning on doing an insect of the week from pictures people send you um i i have been thinking about that clog nog and you probably are the person that sent me the most insect pictures out of anybody it's just an idea that i've had i'd have to figure out how we can have make sure people you know say hey you have the right to use this picture it has to be something part of the email i'd like to do something like that but i haven't quite gone into all the legalities and stuff of making sure that i actually have the copyright and that i can share them and stuff like that all right has a cat ever broken some of your insects? No, I haven't had any of my insects be broken by a cat. They've, I've dropped insect containers and all sorts of stuff before. The biggest thing that messes with my insects, and this is just true of insects in general, is domestic beetles. That's why you wanna have, excuse me, mothballs to kind of deter them because they will come in and they'll feed on them and uh, they're, uh, they, they can be an issue. I am conducting a beetle survey this summer. Any tips or suggestions on trapping methods? I really like uh, pheromone traps. There's some cool ones that you can use if you're targeting specific type of beetles like scarab beetles and Japanese beetles. Look up Japanese beetle pheromone traps and the type of pheromone will depend on what kind of beetle you want to attract. But I do like pheromone traps. Those are really cool and can bring in a lot if you get the right pheromones, which are chemicals that'll attract um, different types of insects. And then um, trapping methods, I do always like doing um, pitfall traps, but you got to keep checking them. I just, pitfall traps are probably one of my favorite techniques. Let's see here. How difficult is a college level entomology course? I don't think they're that difficult. Um, all of the college level entomology courses I have taken, if you put in the work and you really work hard, you will be able to do it and you'll be successful. So. Those are my tips. I mean, I took some very difficult courses with Brian and we had a lot of fun, but it was very difficult and time consuming. I probably would spend, the hardest course for college is taxonomy and uh, um, you know, just insect collections and learning the different groups and names because there's just so many different groups. And to memorize those names, I would spend every day, three or four hours just memorizing names of insects. And that wasn't like, once a week that was probably three days a week and that was like a three-month class so i mean seriously you will be spending hours and hours memorizing names of insects and i probably don't even remember half of them now <laughs> do i have a lot of terrariums if so how many and what specimens um i just have a couple terrariums just some very small ones i use the zoo med critters is the ones that i use for the stick insects that's what i'm using right now anyways but anyways, I think I already talked about what kind of insects I'm raising right now. Oh, it looks like Brian finally actually answered that question I had. All right, have you ever raised monarch butterfly caterpillar? Nope, I have not up to this point. I think that would be a lot of fun. I have raised some caterpillars. I think it was probably hummingbird moths, but um, that's what I've done. Sorry for the shaky camera. I'm trying to fight my <laughs> child right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's good to hear. Bert is TAing that class, Brian. Brian is probably the true, one of the more true entomologists. He probably knows, has greater knowledge than me. But, you know, my passion is really just teaching people and educating them and helping them. I have a lot of questions and I love learning. But Brian probably knows more of the technical stuff than I do. So he's always a good, uh, good person to check in with. <laughs> what are you going to be hosting on him for the colonies? I'm not sure what you're saying. Are you try are you thinking I'm going to use him to uh, keep some parasites alive or something? <laughs> you're crazy, Brian. Me and Brian played Dungeons and Dragons together too, so we've shared some good times. <laughs> All right. Remember what moth? Oh, uh, da, da, da. remember that moth Cuckoo and I found? It looks like. It was eaten by something before I found it. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. 
All right, well, folks, I think I'm going to wrap it up. <laughs> Our numbers have been slowly dwindling as we go, but thank you guys for staying tuned till the end. If you haven't taken that survey yet, please take it. I would really appreciate it. And like I said before, my new schedule will be posting. Yes, I'm sure it is. Um, my new schedule will be posting once a month, but I will still keep um, posting. Shadow Wallark, are you going to do any more Bio Blitz videos? Bug Blitz, I'd like to do some more, but my Bug Blitz videos. Okay, thank you. Um, my Bug Blitz video, I thought it was great and I really liked it, but I only got like 300 views or something and it hasn't taken off like my other videos. So I need to maybe pick a different name or do something. I don't know. It seems like people didn't, or at least YouTube did not recognize it or think it was very valuable. So. Anyways, I will let you guys go. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions, and we'll try to do this, you know, once every so many months. Um, and we'll keep checking in with you guys. Thank you, guys.